Hello there! I, I think I have figured out better angle. It's not perfect. Uh, you can see some um, paintings here. You can see a nice little flower. Yeah, you can see a towel there. Ignore that. Ignore that because this, <laughs> this is a little bit embarrassing if you ask me. But we are here today for NXT Halloween Havoc Night 1. Was it good? Was it bad? You're gonna understand at some point. In this video, you're gonna understand if it's good or bad, or mech, or mid. So, the first match of the night was Roxanne Perez versus Keanu James. And Roxanne Perez won by basically making her finisher on Keanu James' bag, which allegedly is having always bricks in it, and a laptop that at some point Keanu James used to smash over Roxanne. Don't get me wrong, it was a good match, but for me, I never believe that I'm gonna say this, but this match was a little bit fast-paced, and I don't know why I'm complaining about this, because usually I'm not enjoying the wrestling part that much, and I never expected to complain about a fast match, but it, something it doesn't feel right when there is an action going and right after that action 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 and they never slow down and they always break stuff break stuff break stuff and yeah i don't know there, something did not click there but it it was good nonetheless just maybe maybe a, a little a little bit slower next time or just just a little tiny bit after that there was the debut match of Brian Pillman Jr or his new name is Alexis King versus Dante Chen. Unfortunately, at some point, Dante Chen was the new talent, and now he's the guy who is gonna get smashed for Alexis King, which is not great, but it is what it is. Alexis King, a lot of potential, and also I went back in AEW to see what was his work. He has a lot of potential, and I'm really excited to see what's in front of him. He has exciting finisher, a little bit like Willow's Bell, a little bit like uh, Randy's DDT of the ropes, but a modified version. Um, as I said, I'm really excited to see what's in front of that young fella. After that, as I'm doing always, I'm gonna cover the NXT breakout tournament in one segment. Woohoo! Uh, the first match we had was Ariana Grace versus versus Kelani Jordan. Yeah, it was semi-final and basically Kelani Jordan wins. And I was kind of expecting this because Kelani Jordan was working with Dana Brooke for some time. And I was expecting for NXT to build her up to at least a mid-card level. So it was nothing new to me. Was the match okay? Yeah, it was okay. I don't have a good opinion about Ariana Grace, but I'm sure that he's gonna get somewhere at some point or she's gonna get fired, which is not perfect, but sometimes it happens, you know. I don't know why I went into that direction, honestly. The other NXT breakout tournament match, again, semi-final, of course, was Lola Vice versus Carmen Petrovic. To be fair, I like Petrovic's style. I don't like her name. Maybe her name needs a little bit of work, but her style is amazing. She's like a ninja in the ring and she's coming out with katana and she has the looks for it. Unfortunately, she lost and Lola Vice advanced and basically next week is gonna be the final Lola Vice versus Kelani Jordan and I feel like we have seen that match, didn't we? Yeah, it's exciting because the winner is gonna take the contract and it's basically like money in the bank contract and they can cash it in. Uh, I don't know if they cash in it at any time, but they can have for sure a championship opportunity for whatever title they want. So I'm really excited for next week, Halloween Havoc, night two, finals, man, and we're gonna see. And right out after this tournament is gonna be the men's one. And yeah, exciting times, exciting times, exciting times. Interesting one was Chase U versus The Family. Honestly, I was expecting The Family to have a long reign. You know, Tony D, Stax, they're, they're secure, they're good. And I was expecting for them to have a little bit more time with the titles because they were making the titles 
relevant and funny at the same time. Like the way they were picking opponents is unique, like Bada Bing Bada Boom tournament uh, or the dinner table with all of the people that were contenders for the title. And the fact that Chase U won the titles is a little bit shocking for me, to be fair. Yeah, I hope Chase U has a run. Chase U definitely deserves titles. Andrew Chase and Hugh Hudson were in NXT for like more than two years, I feel like, and they deserve something. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen with the family. I doubt that there's gonna be a main roster call up for them, but <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. A match that I skipped, I'm not proud of it, but uh, yeah, it was not the best. Even though I like Blair Davenport, somehow something made me skip that match. Sometimes spin the wheel, make a deal is a little bit too much, don't you think? Uh, so basically the match was Blair Davenport versus Gigi Dolan. And yeah, as I said, I skipped it. Uh, and uh, of course, Blair Davenport wins. I didn't entirely skip it, I just skipped through it and um, Blair Dav Davenport wins. So basically that means that Gigi Dolan has one victory and Blair Davenport has one victory. So I guess we're not gonna end the saga there. Uh, I'm gonna watch the final match for sure, just to give these two ladies a fair chance. I'm pretty sure that both of them are pretty good, so I'm really excited to see the last one of the saga. Last but not least, a shocker for me. A banger and a shocker at the same time. The main event for the NXT Women's Championship, Lyra Valkyrie versus Becky Lynch. The Irish girls against each other. I feel like that Tao is watching me sometimes, you know? Like I'm saying something and I feel like I have eyes on my back. It's weird, uh, I cannot explain it. Why it was a banger? Because it was. Becky Lynch, I feel like she's at this level that she can make a puppet seem like it's good, but at the same time, Lyra is good. Basically, she's under the learning tree of Becky, so it makes sense. Also, great spots, great call-ups. Everything was good. The pacing of the match was good. A shocker. You're gonna ask why it was a shocker? Because Lyra won. I was expecting something completely different. That whole night, it seems like I was expecting something different for each and every match, which is great, which is great. Sometimes unpredictable stuff is great for wrestling. I have said that in the past, but I was shocked because I was expecting Becky Lynch to build a little bit more that title before she moved it to someone else. But I guess the schedule for her is a little bit too much to go on two shows every week while wow, having a kid. I think it was a good moment for, for Lyra to win, but I didn't expect it. Lyra just got that star power from Becky, which is great, I love it. But yeah, as I said, not expecting it. And I'm really excited what Lyra is gonna do with the title now. And are there gonna be any other SmackDown slash Raw superstar that are gonna come for the title? And so, yeah. Basically, that was it for NXT. If I was rating NXT, I would have given it 7.3 out of 10. A lot of 7s lately, I know, but it's not my fault, everyone. Yesterday it was 7.1, today is 7.3, but it was a good show. 7 is not low score in any regard. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm gonna see you tomorrow for AW Dynamite. Peace.